These look interesting, don't they? Hi everybody, today I am taking a look at the new Scribbles That Matter dual tipped brush marker pens. Now these pens were brought to my attention by one of my patrons in our private group. They were like, check these out, and I was like, hell yeah, and they're on Amazon, so I got them in a couple days, and I decided to bust out a review for you guys, because as you guys know, I love the Scribbles That Matter journals. I use the a regular A5 one for my bullet journal currently. I have the white one, and I'm thinking when I get another one, I might want to get another white one, because I really love this one. The point being is I'm excited to try pens and part of the reason that these pens intrigued me is that they are a dual tipped pen with a fine liner tip and a flexible brush tip and you get 60 of them and the price on Amazon is $24.99 for 60 pens. Now if you think about the Tombow dual brush markers which are these guys which are similar they're not exactly the same but they're similar. Currently on Amazon you can get the 96 count complete set of these Tombow pens for $125. So notice that's like a hundred dollar difference for only 30 more pens. So if these pens are nice, then they would be an excellent alternative to Tombow's. You want to use them for like your planner and things like that. So let's check them out. Let's see what we think. And the first thing that we're going to look at here is the packaging. And I can tell you right off the bat that the packaging, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like this it's a canister it's got my lid here like there's spots where the glue isn't holding but that's not really a problem whatever it's a cute canister but look at how these puppies are crammed in here like to like get one in the middle you gotta kind of like work it like you can get them from the outside but to get one like from the center it's like I have nails and I'm afraid I'm gonna fuck my nails up trying to do this like like the only way to get them out is to like dump them out. So this packaging is garbage, like plain and simple. It's totally cute, but um, after I'm done with this video, I'm gonna put these pens somewhere else. <laughs> Here is a pen. The first thing I will tell you is that it feels super cheap. Like the packaging feels almost like something you would get at the dollar spot at Target or something. Like very lightweight, very plasticky feeling. The The only way to tell what color it is is to look at the tip and I wasn't able to find if there's actually names for these colors or numbers or if you just sort of have to wing it. The fine tipped N looks remarkably like a Statler or a Stabilo. There's a, a Stabilo and you can see there that the tips are very very similar to each other. According to Amazon in the question section the fine liner tip is, oh, is 0.4 millimeters. The lids snap on nice and satisfyingly and then if you go to the other side you have your dual brush marker which is very similar in size at least to a Tombow. There's the comparison. They're very similar in size and in shape and they're also both like the, the solid tip. Like I said the lids snap on and off very securely and then if you put the lid on the one end it goes on nice and secure and goes kind of kind of deep on there <laughs> and then if you go the other way It also, this one does not, oops. And it goes in nice and firmly as well. But I keep forgetting which side you're supposed to put the pen in. That's not helpful. So let's actually test these out. The fine liner writes the way you'd expect a felt tipped fine liner to write. I'm curious to see kind of how it handles my heavy hand. It kind of, bent a little bit bent a little bit but it goes right back so far at least it hasn't gotten like wrecked by my heavy hand I will do some testing with these over the next month or so to let you know whether or not the tip starts to like split or anything but it feels like it's got a nice firmness to it where it still has that squishy fine linerness but it doesn't get completely misshapen so that's good now for the brush tip it's very firm. If you compare it to a Tombow, the Tombow is actually a little more flexible. This is more firm, a very firm tip. <laughs> I think I'd intended on writing firm and then it turned into film. <laughs> yeah, these are firmer than the Tombows, but they have a similar feel to them. So let's test out some of the claims. What are the claims of these? Uh, some of these claims are kind of like, whatever I'm getting these off of Amazon limitless creativity unleash your hidden creativity using 60 different vivid colors 
Okay. Goodbye clutter. Combining both fine liners and brush pens into one product held nicely in tube holder. Well, we've already known my thoughts on the tube holder and I, you know, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Acid-free, non-toxic, odorless ink that is quick drying and water-based. So let's test the odor. It doesn't smell like anything, so that works. Let's see the quick drying. Well, that dried right away. The ink went down wet and it's still this. These are very quick drying. That's nice. I, I go with that. Thank you. Scribbles that matter. I'm going to swatch them in my bullet journal, my scribbles that matter bullet journal. So it'll be nice to know whether they ghost in the scribbles that matter paper so we can see because I feel like these would if these are marketed by a company who says who is it for? If you want to bullet journal, do graphic design or color adult coloring books, these are for you. They don't say that they're bleed proof, but they do say that because they're water-based, they won't bleed as much. I am going to test them out. We'll see how they ghost on this paper, and then we'll check them in the Erin Condren. Now, like I said, they do not give you a color guide or numbers for any of these pens. So I'm going to have to take a few minutes and sort these out so I can figure out what's going to go with what, but I have no idea. I guess I could put stickers on them or something to like note which one is like which pen, but I hate having to do that don't like so maybe I should number these should I do that should I with a sharpie maybe okay I'm gonna do some separating and then I think I might number these things so that I can tell which ones are which because I, I don't want them to live in this fucking holder like this thing sucks so I need to figure out I like these pens I can already tell you I like them even though I still have to test the colors and everything else I need to figure out how to organize these so I can swatch them and have the swatch page actually be useful Okay, they're divided into color groups. We can see here that the biggest ranges are in the pinks. There's a shit ton of greens, and there's a lot of purples and blues. And I'm gonna try and organize these kind of from dark to light. This, of course, depends on whether or not they match the caps, and I learned from a little bit of pre-testing with my patrons that not all of them do, but we'll make it work. So like, here are the pinks, and you can see just looking at the caps, it feels like they are a little close together. But let's start putting some swatches in here. Well, that was an exercise, not gonna lie. I'm gonna take a second and write in scribbles that matter. So let's talk because there's a lot to say. First of all, I love the color selection. I think that 
although there are some places like in the blues in some of the greens especially in the pinks where it feels like maybe there's more pinks than i would want and i would maybe have wanted a couple more lighter gray options or something like i could see some places to nitpick this but overall i like the variety here like there isn't it doesn't feel like there's any outlier colors like there isn't any color that's by itself and there's no other colors that might blend with it it feels like every color has at least a couple of matches to blend with it and that's really nice now when it comes to pens that look like the caps matching the colors all of these right here did not match their cap 19 just about a third of the 60 pens did not match the color the kit to the cap and some were more obvious than others as an example this neon green on camera it looks a little bit more neon but in person it's not as neon but the the pen would suggest it's super neon this guy right here isn't neon at all it's kind of like a dusty like a rosy mauve like light rosy mauve but this pen would make you think it was going to scream off the page and then there's other ones like this guy right here where they match but this one is just a lot lighter and this is a little darker and more saturated so some of them match better but they of that 19 of them none of them are really accurate as you saw in the process it took me to do this i had to number each of them i did it on this lid with a sharpie so that I could tell what color was what because so many of them don't match. There's been other pens that haven't had any way to tell them apart where I haven't numbered them. And sometimes it's because there's only like 12 of them. So it's pretty easy. If you have two greens to choose from, it's not going to be that hard to figure out what green you want looking at a swatch page because there's only two to go with. But with this guys, there's so many different pinks, so many different blues, so many different greens, purples, whatever that if I have a specific one I want, it would take me several tries to find it, especially since a lot of them don't match. And so it made sense to number. Now, if I didn't like these pens, I wouldn't bother, but I do like these pens. I like using fine line markers, but these colors, like the colors of the brush pen are so saturated and brilliant. Fine liner tips for the most part are so weak sauce compared to the brush tip. You look at these colors like anywhere, especially like looking over here, you'll notice that like some of the, like here, for example, number 49, the fine tip of the pen is like a lot more muted than the brush tip, which makes me kind of sad. Basically the fine line tips aren't that juicy, which means that they're not going to bleed through. But then you have some like this yellow one where it was kind of crusty and didn't actually write smoothly. There's kind of like a chunky spot here. I had that again, like this uh, number 60 here, this like kind of brighter chartreuse green. It barely registered on, it scraped the paper more than anything else. And so the fine tips are just, they're kind of dry. They're not very saturated not a fan i would use my stabilos over these any day of the week let's look and see how they do bleeding through now you can see here that there's some ghosting but no worse than any of my tombos now let's check them in the Aaron condren paper grabbing this dark one because this dark purple is one of the darkest there's no braille and they ghost but again no more than a tombow does so these are definitely planner friendly pens i want to try out some of the blending that I do with my Tombos since I've been kind of directly comparing these to my Tombos the entire time. So like I usually do, I have an acrylic stamp block. This is how I blend with a Tombow. So I'm going to see how the nibs clean off. So we'll start with a really pale color. We'll take this green and then we'll take a darker green. So we'll go with this green. So let's see what they look like individually. That color. And that color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color some of the darker color onto the stamp block and I'm going to pick it up with this and we're going to see how it blends. It looks like it came off pretty quickly, but you did get the blend. And then after coloring it off, the nib works just fine. Now let's try another thing where we take, I'll take that same lighter color and I'm going to take a darker color and I'm going to color it onto the tip because that's something that you can do with Tombows. I'm going to see how that works. And the nib looks clean. So they do seem to blend in the similar way that the Tombos do. Now I want to see kind of, can I blend them out with a little bit of water or Tombow colorless blender? Here's the Tombow colorless blender. That didn't seem to work all that well. 
the water didn't seem to blend them that well either. Now, I always, don't always have great luck blending the Tombows either. Now let's see if I can pull some of the ink off of here and use that to paint with with water. Well, they seem to do like a lot of the things Tombows do. If the bullet tip on the Tombow is relatively useless for me, the fineliner tip is almost more useless to me on these. The other thing I would also add is that I don't know how long these are going to last. I'm going to have to test them, but I will put some work into these over the next couple of months. Maybe I'll use these instead of Tombows in my plan as you go month in October so I can really see how long they last. What do I actually think about these pens? The cons of these pens for me are A, there's no way to tell them apart. B, a third of them don't match their caps. C, the fine liner tip is just not for me. It's dry and not very usable. I could use it in a pinch, but just not great. And lastly, the the packaging sucks. But the, the pros of these, I really like the feel of it. And if you like a Tombow dual brush marker, then these are probably going to be something you'll really enjoy. And that the price, like the color selection and the price is outstanding. Like, it would take a lot more shittiness about these pens for me to not be able to recommend them. But I can tell you right now that if you have if you have the 96 count of Tombos, you may not need these. I wouldn't say that there's enough difference between the Tombos and these to require yet another purchase. But if you don't have the Tombos or if you've been looking for a big set of markers but haven't been able to drop the change on the Tombos, this would actually be, I think, a really decent substitute. So I would suggest that you check them out, see if they look like something you'll do. and plan to store them somewhere else <laughs> anyway you guys if you have pens you'd like me to take a look at please let me know down in the comments what do you think about these do you think that this is a good idea do you think that scribbles that matter might have actually like knocked it out of the park on this one or maybe not out of the park but at least down the field i don't i don't know sports like not out of the fucking arena or whatever but far enough where the people have to run to go get the ball if that makes sense i don't know if that makes sense thank you so much for watching subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you next time